John did not want to baptize Jesus. It was this weird role reversal thing. Why do you come to me when I should be baptized by you? But Jesus, side note, I feel like something really cool is about to happen every time you hear, but Jesus, or but God, like, grab your popcorn, like, this is, this is going to be a good one. But Jesus says to John, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Three things. Three loaded things before we even get to the heavens opening and the Spirit of God making the difference. One, come on, John, let it be so. We have work to do. Number three, we are going to fulfill all righteousness. <laughs> what does that mean? I know you don't know. I'm Jesus, you're not. Let's just cover that as good things. And I know what you're thinking, I'm coming back to that too, because it's in the middle. It is proper for us, not me, not you. Us, John, you and me. I wonder if among all the clatter and clang of this Bible story, the message we're actually supposed to be getting is the two-letter word that appears in Jesus' invitation. Us. I wonder if through the grace of this story being preserved for our ears, the message we can hear today is that Jesus is a partner in our ministry. Along with this important distinction given by Jesus is another remarkable difference in Matthew's account. Matthew's gospel is the only one that records the Father using a different turn of phrase. Instead of, with you, I am well pleased, we get, with whom I am well pleased. Now, you might be thinking, Thomas, you're missing the forest through the trees. You need to pay attention to the larger overarching story, the obvious one, the story of God's divine presence and grace. This, though, adds to the richness and depth of of our understanding of the character of God. In Mark and Luke, we see a glimpse of the relationship God has with God's self. With you, I am well pleased. God does good work. But by changing the word to whom, we have a different understanding. The Father does not communicate with Jesus in Matthew. Whom is meant to point, to say him. There, y'all better pay attention to that. He is mine, and now he is yours. God in heaven gives us Jesus in the Matthew account. And what are we to do in response? I wonder if this is where ministry comes in. One of the simple questions we didn't grapple with earlier is, what does minister mean? It means, quite literally, one who is less, one who is a servant, or who acts under the authority of another. Jesus begins his ministry after his baptism, the work of a servant, working under the authority of God in heaven. And why do we minister? Because Jesus did. And what does that look like? I cannot tell you that. It will look different for each and every one of us. But what I can tell you is this. Ministry is active, not passive. Jesus being baptized was not him acquiescing to some needed ritual. It was a vigorous and intentional offering that allowed us, most especially in Matthew's account, to see just who it is that has been sent to earth to redeem each of us from sin and guilt and death. In the first reading today from Isaiah, we are drawn into this work of ministry, not just Jesus. This isn't just his job. God has, as Isaiah records, called you. 
God has taken you by the hand and kept you, giving you as a covenant, a promise, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. What does that look like today? It means in our own ways acknowledging, accepting, and sharing the gift of the faith that we have to bring light. The gift that we bring is new life, forgiveness of sins, <laughs> removal of guilt, and existence filled with love. And if we are holding something so precious and so good, something that we sincerely believe can change the world, we can't help but share it. When we share it, we live fully into the mutual ministry set out in Jesus' baptism. Jesus gives himself to the work of the Father. The Father is pleased. We give ourselves to Jesus. Jesus promises to be with us. The world is given to us as a sacred trust, a ministry field. And we, in turn, are called to respond to a world in need of the gospel, in need of good news. Ministry is not always hard, and it's certainly not always easy. Living into the baptismal covenant we make ourselves is a challenge and a comfort, a duty and a privilege, holy work for holy people. It's how we share God's love with a world craving a new and better way. So, ministers of the church, we have a great and wondrous task in front of us. Thanks be to God for.